हालेलुया हालेलुया ये बराबर की मैं भी सीटेड ही सराया we do esteem the most high for all that he grants unto us as a nation a people that he directs us into the path the pathway that brings about the strength of his assurance in the bosom of Israel and it is vitally important that we rest in the assurance of his Torah and if we do not rest in the assurance of the Torah of Omar Yam, we will find ourselves walking in pathways that will cause us to walk in delusion. We will be a bewildered people. And by the revelation of Yahshua Hamashiach, he makes known the beauty of Torah unto his people. And it is vitally important that we hear what the Ruach of Yah speaks on the to his raya his elect the call the ba here of ya those that he has elected and chosen according to his own election i want to preface before i began teaching and i want to teach this message tonight we're not going to be long but i pondered today especially yesterday as i look at one of the most vilest crop things that we call religion out of this jesuit spirit we know as christendom or i think of the duplicity and the falsehood and the hypocrisy of the tenants of such a bewildered jezebel and the reason that i ponder that is because one of their most prominent elites ministers uh, he passed away on yam rishon it is speculated that he died with an overdose of cocaine because when they found his body in the hotel in new york he was lying on his back and face up and in his pocket he had some white powder i'm giving you just a logic on the story mr zachary tends one of the most prominent members of that social ceo circus of religious harlotry 42 years old he had had a bit of trouble because he had engaged with a stripper that cause his family to be dispersed and yet he has some 8000 what they call members a part of this degenerate harlotry the reason i'm saying that is this i began to read some of the opinion of people those that say that they are of christendom they said he's going to hell He's a flat-out hypocrite because he died with an overdose of drugs. They are waiting for the toxicologist to let them know whether it was drugs. But if he had white powder, believe me, it was cocaine. And I pondered. I said, "Your what? Hypocrisy." Because I would ask all those a question. who say that this man that was a part of this degenerate harlots he succumbed to death by the speculation of cocaine and he died with a drug overdose i asked them all the same question then what about your grandmama that they have feel her with morphine to overcome the pains when she lie in the midst uh, of the hospital where by her mind is not cognate she cannot think they have put every kind of pain killer every kind of drug and that old woman what about your son or your daughter yeah. where about they have fill their minds with this from ikea the drugs of delusion do the same principle apply my friend 
Drugs are drugs. And it makes no difference what kind they are. And if Mr. Tim's will burn in hell, then tell me about your grandmama or what about your mother that died under the seduction of drugs whose mind was not cognate. They could not think. They were kept alive by drugs. Some of the most powerful drugs when they would awake and they did not, could not, and were not familiar with their surroundings, and they didn't even know who their children were. So the principle that is applied to Mr. Tim is it a principle that is applied to the whole, the whole situation of that matter. If someone is on drugs, they die, do they go to hell? And if Mr. Tim goes to hell, then your mama goes to hell as well. If he goes to hell, then your little baby, the one whereby they have induced drugs in that child, it is the same thing. They're all drugs. And the hypocrisy of this religious whore, yet they tell the people to go get induced by drugs. And the pharmaceuticals are nothing but large conglomerates of drug houses. They used to call it pharmaceutical or medication. Now they are blatant. They simply call it drugs. The elderly need their drugs. Whether it's morphine, codeine, all these drugs alter the consciousness of anyone that takes it. I don't care whether they're in pain, they're sick, the drugs alter their mental concept uh, and their ability to be cognate, uh, it alters that Yisrael. And even though that they may be in pain, uh, it dents uh, certain parts of the brains uh, of the brain that they cannot even feel the pain. I'm simply bringing this to point uh, that if this man died uh, because of an overdose of cocaine, uh, when your mother dies in the hospital with an overdose of drugs, does she go to hell as well? The duplicity of this falsehood. There is only one people that's going to make it into the Melkuts, and that is the truth. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to believe it. But the Chatzve express explicitly what is going to take to make it into the kingdom. We're not going in in our suspect way, Yisraya. It must be in total compliancy as to the what the Torah of Yah speaks unto Yisraya. I want to emphasize that tonight. Who shall be Yashach or saved? Endure those that shall overcome the very powers of hell that their minds are not deluded, they're not seduced by the very trickery of hell and brought under this delusion, this illusion of darkness, whereby they think that they are going into the kingdom of Almighty Yah. It doesn't work that way. And this Jezebel, this vile entity of hell. This God-worshipping Jezonite spirit has seduced, coddling the minds of many, that we actually think that we are going into the kingdom, not according to the principles of the Torah of Almighty Yah. As Hashatan introduced um, to Hava by his subtleties, a deception by the expression of his mouth, he is still capable of of doing that today. There is a spirit Yisraya that distorts the image of Yah and removes us from the cognate consciousness of what Yah implies for us to do. And I want to deal with that first. And then I will show us the strength of our Yoshua, our salvation. We're not making it in any way but what Yah speaks unto us. I want to be gotten here in the book of Lucas. 
This is an event that Yoshua speaks of uh, a time known as the troubles or Yahob trouble. It is a time of great afflictions and tribulations. It is a time of trial. Because of this world in the decadence of sin, this is a nation and the world has no conscience of what is right. And Yahshua speaks of the calamities and the great afflictions uh, that would try the host of Yisrael. That is why it is known as Yaakov troubles the agony uh, of Yaakov uh, as he wrestled with the Melach until there is no power in his flesh. And Yah the Melach smote him uh, that he halted uh, upon uh, his feet and that is what Yah must do to our flesh he is going to smite it and bring it down to the gates of hell uh, whereby it shall be consumed Yisrael and he speaks explicitly uh, to us for this time in the book of Lucas chapter 21 and verse 16 this is what Yisrael would experience he tells us that, first of all, the book of Lucas 21 and verse 16. He says, and you shall be my gods. You shall be betrayed. There shall be those that shall act treacherously against you with great deceit and lies, with cunning craftiness of the subtlety, and they shall betray you. He gives us that indication that there shall be a spirit of betrayal. There will be those that are faithless. They have uh, no emona at all. Yeah. And you, Yisrael, you shall be betrayed both by parents. That this is what the Torah says. This is the expression of Yeshua. Your parents will betray you. They shall speak by God with treachery and deceit. Their words shall be filled with treachery. They shall be filled with deceit. They will lie to you and tell you it's all right. They will lie and say it's permissible. They will lie and say you're going to be all right and you're not all right. And they betray the faith of Yah because they are faithless. There is no faith in them. And that is what Baghat is. That is what a betrayal is. It is one that has no confidence in the one that they are associated with. It is almost like this. I draw the analogy. You're in a difficult situation. You're about to engage into a tremendous battle, a physical battle, a warfare. You think you have this friend here on the left uh, and one on the right that say, I will stand with you uh, through thick and thin. And when the battle began to commence, uh, you look for them uh, and they are gone. Because they had no confidence uh, in their ability uh, to withstand the onslaught. Uh, and they were certainly not about uh, to strengthen your hand uh, in the matter. So he warns us. We shall be bagats. We shall be entreated with treachery and lies uh, and, and subtleties from hell. Both by parents he said uh, that this is your sure speaking. He says by your brothers uh, and he said, not only that, but by your mishpa, the family, you shall be betrayed by them. And friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. They will cause you to be put to the physical death. And not only that, in our agony of oration and trying to resolve the factors of their lives, we lose sight on you. We have no confidence in the Torah of Yah. Our minds are not allowing uh, the principles of Yah to become practical uh, in our daily activities. Uh, so there is no time for prayer. There is no time uh, to, to resort unto Torah and to cry out to Yah. Yeah. And they shall put you to death. There shall be no liveliness of the testimony of Yahshua. There shall be no burning... Uh, invigorated desire or passion in us when it comes to the Torah of Omar Yah. We will do things that uh, in a conscience that is not even aware of our acts uh, and our activities. Uh, and many 
shall be put to death. Have you ever heard someone say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just feel like giving up. I don't want to go any farther. You see, it shall be caused by the betrayal and the agony. And because we are worrying and trying to, to fix their matters, and we haven't fixed our own matters, Israel. So there shall be a bogart. We shall deal with those that are treacherous and wicked and have no conscience of Yah. He tells us that we shall be hated, so nay, uh, of call all men for my name's sake. Because of what my name stands for, because of what my name represents, uh, there will be those that will despise you. Your, your parents will despise you. Your friends and your family, they will say that you have lost your marbles. Uh, and they will try to induce death into your heart. That you began to question Yah. You began to question the authenticity of his Torah. And that you began to exalt your mind against the mind of Almighty Yah. Many shall be hated for my name's sake. But there shall not one hair of your head perish. Yah says, I will not allow my elect, my bochet, those that I have chosen and elected to make up the diadems of my crown to accentuate my beauty and to show the expression of my beauty that's what Israel is it is a people that express the beauty of Yah we are members of the diadem of the crown of Yah we are the crown upon his heads and we are the people that express his beauty, the power of his beauty. Yisra'ya, that's why he elected a people that had uh, no power, no strength, uh, no kingdom identity. Uh, and yet he placed his identity uh, upon that people. And he gave us assurance through a vivid live uh, testimony. And that's the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. When it becomes real in us, Yisrael, that we have the assurance of our Abba until he is birth and the power of his life is in us. We will never reckon whom our Abba is. We will never be settled in our mind with assurance. We will doubt. We will ponder what the Torah says. We will question Yah. We will turn to the left and to the right. And we will find no resolve or no remedies as we turn. We must turn back to His Imat. We must turn back to the Torah of Almighty Yah. He says, Nothing shall touch you or come nigh unto you. But He gives us a tremendous warning here and words of strength. He says to Yisrael, in your, in the power of your yachol, in your patience, know you in your patience. I want you to yada that in your yachol, the power to prevail against the opposition of darkness, the strength to overcome the might, the consciousness of Torah, that you may overcome those circumstances. As we sing the song, Yah is able, the assurance of our mind that He is able. That's why Yahshua said that not one hair of your head shall be touched. I will not allow the enemy to rob the body or any part of the body. He shall not desecrate it at all. Nothing shall be touched. That which is permitted, it is the hand of Yah. And we want you to know that in your yachol, in your power, the will, to overcome all of those afflictions, when they rise up against you, when they bring you to death to destroy your desire, your purpose, your will to please Yah. When they ostracize or speak evil of you uh, and say it doesn't take all that, you know that it is of Yah the trying of your imuna, of our faith. It is what brings about the resolve, the patience, the yachol. Because if there is no trying of our imuna, we have no patience at all, Yisra'ya. We must, as Yaakob says, Yada, 
knowing that the trying, the fiery circumstances of your imuna, it produces, it brings about yachol, it brings about the patience that we wait upon Yah. We must wait with the power of the testimony of Yahshua. That is what must reside in our bosom. We must rely upon the strength of that. That is what the Torah does. It constantly uh, reassures us of uh, the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the more we do not uh, spend time in that, uh, it does not uh, continue to generate uh, the power of liveliness in us. Uh, and the enemy gives us over unto things uh, that cause us to begin to flirt with things. Uh, and then we began to lose sight on Yah. And there is one thing uh, that he caused all of us uh, to be carried away with. I will get to that, all right. But it is in the patience. We must have the endurance. We must endure, Yisra'ah. We must have the Yachol. We must draw on that which is not even in us. We must draw on truth. We must draw from the Ru'ach HaKodash of Almighty Yah. We must trust what he says. We must believe that even when the opposition of those that say they walk with you and stand with you when they bow God, uh, will you see their faithlessness? And there is no assurance of imuna in them uh, when they don't stand on the principles uh, of the Torah of Yah. That's why I spoke with the preface at first. Uh, here Mr. Tim died. And yet he goes to hell uh, because the critics say that he has snorted cocaine. And yet their mothers uh, are filled with morphine and codeine and they died, do they? And yet they cry for the drugs too. I need something to dense the pain of my agony. The dying of cancer, they induce them into drug comas. Whereby the pain does not overtake them. That's a reality of what we as a nation of people, what we contend with. And we must deal with the reality of that. Yisra'ah. We must understand that no us, Yisra'ah, in our patient, possess ye your nefesh. I understand what we think about when we use the word, quote, soul, unquote. I know how we have been taught. But the nefesh, it is the life of man. It is the breath in man that illuminates and calls even the natural man to live. And we know that we are shuk our being, the man person, through our patience and waiting on the promises of Almighty Yah. We cannot succumb to the subtleties of darkness, Yisra'ya, because if we do that, then we will not endure the tests of the trial that we are about to be engaged in. A profound statement that Eliphaz speaks unto Eob in the book of Job chapter 5. He speaks profoundly here in Job, Eob chapter 5 and verse 2. He talks about the ha'as or the wrath of Yah, his vexation, the anger of Almighty Yah. He speaks unto Eob of this matter. For the wrath kills it harach. Eob 5.2 We know that wrath, it kills the evil, the foolish, those that despise wisdom. And that's what evil is. It is us that despise wisdom. And then we mock the situation when we are found guilty. We think that it is trivial. It's not trivial, Yisra'ah. And so we tend to mock the situation. Uh, we tend uh, with our jests of laughter uh, and to think that it's minuscule, but it's not Israel. 
When the foolish, that is the nature of the evil. They mock, they despise wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? When a statement is made to us that will enhance us, progress us, make us think in the mindset of Yah, that's wisdom, Yisraya. It is wise. It's beyond our capability. Because if it wasn't, we would not respond the way we respond. You will do things differently. And you don't mark that. You don't mark what Yah says. You don't mark what Yah says. Whatever He says to us, uh, we that are pure in heart, uh, then what our love is tahor, it is clean, uh, it is not contaminated uh, with the vileness of the world, uh, to the pure, all things uh, are pure. And we are defiled and unbelieving, then there is nothing. Uh, is pure. We don't receive it as the mind of Omar Yah. And only that mind can speak to the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. You will not hear what Yah says if we do not have that mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And for the wrath, for the wrath of Yah, it harak, it kills the foolish, those that despise the wisdom of Yah, the foolish man. And envy shall moose or slay uh, the pata, the silly, the silly one. It is uh, envy that slays the silly one. Was not Hashatan envious of Omar Yah, that he said, I will exalt my throne above the throne of Yah. And Yah says, you fool. You shall be brought down to the gates of hell. We don't think that in our response to matters, our attitude, it is the envy that shall slay or bring death to those that are pata, that are silly. That's why we, Yisraya, we cannot operate in that kind of spirit, the silliness. I will show us why. We have to be a nation of people that's sober in our minds. That our conscience is shaped by the Torah of Almighty Yah. The bath of Tizayon, the daughters, cannot operate in a silliness activity that we know that is silly. Yah says it is the envy. It is almost like a man seeing another man that has the characteristics that he envies. And he is somewhat offended because he doesn't see that kind of strength reflected from him. It makes no difference whether it's a man or a woman. Just like Yahshua said, we shall be betrayed even of our mishpah. Same thing with the daughter of Tizayon. When they see one that there are things and there's a beauty about this one or that man uh, that they despise and they envy, uh, then they don't know how to interact in a way that's mature. It is always silly. There's a reason that I'm bringing this out. I want to show us something, Israel, because it is the bath of Tizayon uh, that represents the beauty and the excellence uh, of the house of Israel. And that is why her price, her, her high yield, the strength, her ability is beyond the price of rubies. You cannot put a price on the preciousness of a bath of Tizayon. And so that's why the enemy is doing all he can to break them and to draw and to allure them into this pata, this openness of their mind. And they act silly and immature. We can't do that, Israel. We cannot because we must endure this race. Well, that's not tying in with what you're teaching. Well, it will tie in. This would tie in. Isn't that what Hashatan did to Hava? For Yah knows the day that you eat of that, you shall not surely die. That's what she said. And you think that there was not any kind of interplay with them, just her giggling and smiling and laughter. It's nothing like the spirit of Pata, the silliness, Yisra'ah. That's why the beauty of Yisra'ah, it cannot, it can never reflect the beauty of Yah if our attitude and our actions 
are based in these kinds of things. We must remove ourselves from that. We must get above it. We must get away from it. And that's the truth, Yisra'ya. I will show you what. Anytime. We know that if we sin willfully, uh, after we have heard of the Torah of Yah, we're not going into the kingdom. Now, when we are acting pata or silly, it's because uh, there is the vileness of sin in our bosom. I will show us that, Yisra'ya. Let me move a little farther, all right? Shaul speaks unto Timotheus here in 2 Timothy, yeah? chapter 3 and verse 6. He speaks and he warns Timotheus uh, against the rising danger of those that are trying to infu- uh, uh, infiltrate uh, into the Torah of Yah and to bring in uh, surmising doctrines uh, of death and wickedness. And yet there's a certain mind that they target. Uh, they will bring all kinds of doc- doctrines uh, and folly and stupidity. And yet there is an alluring one whereby they will draw that mind, they will draw that consciousness, and then they will be gotten to turn and speak evil against you all. He says here in chapter 3, verse 6, 2 Timothy, he talks about these seducers. He says, these are the sort which creep into houses and they lead Shabbat. You hear that? They lead captive. Silly, silly, silly women weighted down with sin. You understand, Yisrael? I must lay out these parameters because we must endure until the end if we are going into the kingdom. I will show us the tenacity of those uh, that if they were in this time, uh, they will not consider anything at all but uh, what it takes to please Yah. And so this kind uh, of seduction and drawing, uh, in this hour that we're in, uh, it looks for the silly one with the religious consciousness of one. And we are religious people. We love any form of religion uh, to make us feel nice, uh, to make us jump, uh, to make us think that we possess something uh, for the doctrine and those that are deceivers. Uh, for they look for the sort of that. When a woman with a, with a house uh, is silly, uh, it's because it's weighed down with sin. When women are silly, they're full of sin. When men are silly, it's their hearts are weighed down uh, with sin. When they act silly, when they act from the papa, this mind that is open uh, is because they're weighted down uh, with sin. And we think that it's all right, but the, but the Torah talks about sporting uh, and playing. It talks about that. There's no time to play in this hour. Playing time is over with. We can't play. We can't play with our nefesh. We cannot play with our lives. You cannot play with the sons and your daughter's lives, Yisrael. You cannot be acting silly. And so this spirit seeks out those that are silly. And laid down and they're weighted down with sin. That's why they act silly, Yisrael. We act silly like that because there's a plethora of sin. Our minds are full of wickedness and uncleanliness. And we think it's just a, a fond gesture, but it's not. It's not. It is time for us to be sober. That's why Yah says, uh, even to the Zohin, uh, that they must be sober and diligent. They must be vigilant men. There is no time for the silliness of activities. Uh, we cannot do that. Because that spirit seeks out that. It seeks out that kind of silliness. I will show us. Let me move a little farther, all right? Uh, don't reject what I'm saying, okay? He warned Timotheus of those kinds of men. And they would look for the women that are laying. And the woman represents not only the biological woman, but she represents a body of elect or people that gather to express this kind of what we call worship. And we find today that many are silly, the men, the silly, they're telling jokes. They're full of folly, clownishness. That should not be Yisra'ya. 
we as men, we must guard the house. So he looked for women that are, for this sort of they which creep. They come in unawarely. In my days, that was a slang terminology that when you were going to do something that is under the disguise where no one would see you, you say, you're going, to, you're going to creep tonight. You got to do a little creeping. I got to creep in. So no one would discover me. And because of that nature of this pata, then the spirit is not discovered, Yisrael. If we did not act in that spirit of pata, then we would discover that spirit. And we have not discovered what, uh, what is alluring us uh, and drawing us from the things uh, that are pertinent and valuable to the heart of Yah. That we as a nation, a people, walk in a way that honors him and please him. And that nations will ask the question, now, why do you do that? What is the reason of your tigma? We must do that. There's nothing more vile than this pata. That's why the world is teaching everyone to be open-minded. Well, I'm not going to be open-minded. I'm not going to accept the faggot dogs marrying and embracing them. I am, I am not. You can be open-minded. I am not going to be open-minded, Israel. I am not. I was looking before I came earlier today, and it was an article on 10 of the most influential women of religion. You did not see any kind of femininity about any of them. The women, the lines and their faces were hard. One, I wanted to show my isha, just said, look at her face. Tell me, what is that, a man or a woman? There was no feminine characteristics to them at all. They did not even have the sensuous of a woman. You know that that's not Yah, Yisrael. You know it's not. And because of the decadence and the wickedness of a nation, then Yah has permitted these kinds of men to rise up. And they look for the silly woman that are laden and weighted down with sin for this cause or for this sort of they which creep into the houses and they lead. They bring them into Sheba, into captivity. They call them Kessel or silly women. Women that are simpletons, they're foolish, they act silly. It's a lot of laughter. I say this to all of us. We should not be consumed with a lot of laughter. We should not. Everything is not funny. It's not. It is time that we have a, have a sober consciousness. And so this sort lead, and they creep in. They're not even aware, and they bring them under bondage. Why? Because women that are simple, they're stupid, and then they're arrogant in their silliness. They stand up and they will fight you. Although they know they're silly, they get arrogant with it. Women, they are weighted down with sin. Who are being led away with various lusts. They're full of lust, And they're full of their own lustful, empty ways that produce nothing at all. Isn't that what, if we look at the religious world, isn't it that way? Everything that they feed on, it is lust, to be lustful, to get more, to have more. They're never satisfied at all. And these men, if you look at many of these established houses of ill repute, you will find nothing but women in them. You will find them falling out. You will find them running and jumping and bumping and dancing and falling backwards. That's what you find, Israel. And that is the truth, whether you buy it or not. You find the men taking pleasures and leisures with them because they're led away with their own lusts. They're brought into captivity, Israel. We must be warned of these things in order that we may endure until the end. Now this is not just per se. Speaking of the woman. It's speaking of his house. 
I will bring you to that point. He said, they shall be ever learning, and they are never able to come to the deum, the experience of imat, of Torah. They're always learning, they're always hearing, but they don't have the da'at, the knowledge, the power to discern, to know what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. They're always learning things, but yet they're not learning the power of Torah that brings about the deliverance and the assurance of Omar Yah unto Yisra Yah. They're always learning, but they're never able. That's a profound statement. They cannot. They will not. There is no possibility, uh, never able uh, to come to the knowledge of the Torah of Omar. Yeah, that's why my precious bath and sons uh, of Yisrael, yeah, we must not allow this pata. This is what the world is sowing. Uh, you got to be open minded. You got to be acceptant. Uh, I'm not going to accept it. I'm not going to accept their ways. I'm not going to accept the religious platform. I am not going to accept it. None of it. That one sin pillow of it. I'm not going to accept it. I'm not going to accept silly women. The silly men. I'm not. At all, Yisrael. How do I know that this entails or it speaks of us? Turn quickly to Hoshea, the book of Hosea. It identifies the silly woman. And so when you find silly bath of Tizayon, you know that that is a canker in the midst of Yisrael. You know that. Because the bath of Tizayon, they are the higher, they are the women of strength and maturity. They're the women of nurturing. That's what they are. And so when their ish has no strength, uh, it is her nurturing uh, that brings the strength to his bosom. Why? Because of her faithful commitment uh, unto the commands of Yah and even the aura of her spirit that emanates from her because uh, she is faithful to the commands uh, and what Yah commands. And it brings strength unto the bosom of the man. Hoshea speaks as Yah utters out of his voice he in Hosea chapter 7 verse 11, he uses the identity of Ephraim. We know that Ephraim were the nine tribes of whole Yisrael that they call the northern kingdom. Yehuda, what we call the southern kingdom. He says Ephraim. He says Ephraim or Yisrael also is like a pata, a silly, a silly dove without heart. Does it say that in your translation? Yes, Ephraim is Israel. He says she is like a silly dove without heart. She's pata. She's silly. And that's why every kind of spirit creeps in and leads us astray from the Torah of Yah. We see the God in the hour that we're in, the betrayer, where you don't have to do that because you're not committed, husband. You don't want the wife to be committed. So you do all kinds of things that slay her, to kill her, that she is not committed to you. And those that say they love you, your family member, they will speak lies or, or anything to draw you away from pressing and enduring what the Torah commands. That is the truth. That's what we shall be by God, betrayed, both by parents, kinsmen, family. And we don't see it that way because uh, we're just like a silly little dove. Uh, and if we have no heart, then how can we love Yah? Does He command us to love Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, uh, and all of our nefesh, uh, all of our strength? Uh, does He command us to do that? So if we're silly, there's no heart to love Yah. And if we have no heart to love him, uh, then we are pata, we are open-minded, and we are silly, and we accept anything, Yisra'ya. We must begin to examine ourselves. We must begin to examine ourselves. Oh, Ephraim, you act just like a silly little dove without love. And you know you're silly, because he says you call Misraim, Egypt, 
Oh, I, you know, they have such fun that they got so much. That's what he says. Oh, everything looks so nice and misreheen. You love the world. Any man that loves the world, then the love of Yah is not in that man. This is what he says. You know they're silly. And we are silly little people. Because we love what Miss Rayim offers. It offers one thing that's death. And separation from Yah. That's why Yah had to pull his people out of that land. And that's why we must come out of her my people. Touch not the unclean things of the world. We must. This is what they say. And, and they call to Miss Rayim. And they go to Ashur or Assyria. And what Misraim represent? And Ashur represents. Uh, when they came out of Misraim, what was one of the first things they did? They began to build their own gods. Did they not? And that is what Assyria associates. It is the idolatry and idol worship. And we worship everything. We worship everything that's in Assyria, in Ashur, everything in Misraim. We drool, we lost, we got the hair. We want, we think about things instead of Yah, Yisrael. And he says that, Ephraim, you are a silly little dog. You have no heart to love me, and because you don't love me, you cannot uh, endure the beauty of Torah. We're silly. Yeah. It's represented in the actions and the deeds of the Bath de Zion. They easily led away with silly conversation. Because the men are silly. And if we are silly, then the women are silly. And if the women are silly, they're training the babies to be silly. And if they're training the babies to be silly, uh, it's because there's such a weight of sin in them uh, that we don't even see our sin, Yisrael. We ought to delight to mentor one another. Take the young one under your bosom. You know, I watched the bath and her two daughters who were here the other day, and I watched Ach Yabim. His wife, as she was walking with those two little young bath, surely they have an ema, but they need mentors as well. Someone like that that they look up to and admire, and they're inspired. Yeah. It's sad, Israel. Yeah. It is so pitiful today. And it was pleasing to see that. My heart rejoiced, although I was laboring, was hot, and I was sweaty because I needed to complete a job. But it did something internally in me. I say, they need that. Sure they do, because in Mishraim, they're not going to get that. They create this idolatry in their minds, every kind of wicked lust. They feel slighted. They feel less than this wicked world because the world boasts, Misraim always boasts, and what they have, and they feel as though that they are lacking, and they feel less than others. That is the truth. But I don't care what they say. I was in school, you understand? And things back then were not as pressurizing as they are today. I was saying to some of my ach, even in the schools today, the blatant, the blatant uh, uh, disrespect and the respect of person that the teachers have. That if this one comes from this neighborhood and this mother, then they tend to respect them and honor them more than that child whose mother do not possess uh, the same what they think as the equivalent uh, of that one. Whose children they think dress well, whose fathers and families they congregate together so they don't think much of that child. I saw it even as a child. And it was very, it was very uh, taxing uh, on me as a child. It was very, it, it hurts when you would see that. Oh, John Crump, Eric Harris, uh, their parents that were respectable. Uh, you understand? So they need that. 
The young ones need that kind of mentoring ship. You take them and you reassure their young minds uh, as they battle against the, against the scourge of the world as the world battles in their young tender minds uh, to shape and to form them, uh, to, to bring them unto the same kind, uh, the same kind of a spirit of the world. They need that. And that's a fact. My love rejoice in that. I could have danced on that. You understand? Because I said, said to my Ishaw, you need to bring them down and make them do some things around here. Teach them some things. They need that. The school is not going to teach them that. And that's a fact, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let me proceed in this. One of the most prominent things, because we are silly, we have no heart, and we have no love, Yisrael. Yah commands us to love him with all of our love. And when we have not that, then it leaves us open as vessels of every kind of unclean spirit there is. And there's a reason why we're not going to be able to endure until the end. He says that Ephraim, Yisrael, we're silly little dove and we have no heart. Yeshua gives us a tremendous expression of this time here in the book of Matithiya. Hallelujah. Because we do not yachol. Matthews 24, 12. I'm still dealing with the troubles of Yaakov. He says here in Matthews 24, 12, as I began in Lucas 21, it is the same scenario. He said, and because of on or of in iniquity shall abound. When something abound, it is attached. It is attached. It's persistent. It's consistent. And because iniquity shall abound, he tells us that the of the love of many, shall wax cold. There is no tenderness to the love. You can't even sense it. He said, the heart of many shall wax cold. Well, what is what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the Torah. He speaks of a silly woman that is laden with sin. Isn't that so? And if she is laden with sin, it's because she has no heart to please Yah according to the Torah. Does it all add up? It will add up, Yisrael. And because we're laden down with sin... It begins to produce this mind that we just don't give a damn. We say to Yah, I don't give a damn. And that is what iniquity is. It is a mind, it is a conscience that is not, that is not directed by the Torah. It is a Torahlessness mind conscience. Isn't that what the enemy does all the time? To keep our minds out of the Torah? Come on, Yisrael. You, you know that is the truth. You consider the time you spend with Yah is not much time, is it? Just be honest. There is nothing like honesty. When we hear the emet of Yah, it makes us free uh, from the power of our own flesh. And just be honest, that's why, that, that's why iniquity abound. And because the ovon shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There is no sensitivity, there's no touch to the love. There is no embracing. You embrace, but there is nothing that he meant, he emits from one's heart to give. Love gives us assurance. You take a child, and that child, it is the love that gives the child the assurance. It is the pure innate power of love that gives the child the assurance. It is, Yah is what? Is he love? So it is his innate power of whom he is that gives us assurance. And because we have no heart, because of our iniquity, Yah has been the director of our path, we don't consider Yah. We will know we're walking in that because we're lustful. We're lustful and we're silly. We must stop our silly ways today. You can't wait till tomorrow. Time out today. We cannot become the practitioners of silly ways. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Well, if you have no heart, you cannot love. That's why he's going to take out. That's why Yahshua came to take out the stony heart. To give us a heart of flesh. And to replace that. Hallelujah. 
So if Ephraim is without heart, we have no power to love. We can't love. He says this, Yisra'ya, although this thing shall be, but he that endures or endure, Yachol, those that stand in the might of his power, those that are able, those that walk in the strength of the Torah, but he that endures until the end, he says, the same shall be delivered, save your shach. It's going to take the power of endurance. We must endure until the end. The same that shall endure. He tells us of the great afflictions that shall be. He tells us of what things that we shall avoid, Yisrael. We cannot allow this openness of mind to bring us under this delusion of this age. We must have the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach, that we may talk to our Abba. We cannot have the mind of Misraim or Ashur, that we take uh, solace and comfort uh, in the idolatry of wickedness uh, and this form of false worship. Uh, we cannot do that as a nation uh, of people. Once we began to do that, then our hearts began to wax cold because we have become so weighted down with iniquity. We have, uh, we have harbored iniquity and sin. We have hid sin in our hearts. We have covered sin and we have covered sin by our own silliness and our own pathic uh, ways. We can't do it, Yisrael. There's a battle that we must endure and endure it to the end. And in order for us to do that, there are men in the book that their traits Yah talks about. In order for us to endure to Yahol, we must take upon the same mindset and study the character of these men. See what they endure and see how they press against all opposition that they will be Yashach saved in the end. And it is expressed in the book of Yeskel, in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 14, I want to begin reading chapter 14 and verse 12. As Yah, Yoshua spoke about the troubles of Yaakov, as I began there in the book of Lucas 21 and also Matiti Yah, we as a nation of people, Yah is not mocked. We have so much and we're going to have to pay the price. No doubt about that. We have sown to our flesh and, and we stink. We sow to the flesh of the flesh, we shall reap corruption. If we sow to the ruach of Yah, we shall reap life everlasting. We shall have the ulam, the ulam, the, uh, the life that is eternal beyond the existence of what life is. But there were those that Yah speaks of this time, the time of your occult troubles. He speaks of this in the book of Yeskel here. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 12. It says, And the word of Yahiah, that the power of revelation of truth, he says, it came again to me, he spoke unto me, saying, that this is what Yahar unto Yeskel. He called him Bin Adam, man, the man of the earth. He says, Bin Adam. When you see the land sins, hata, did I not read to us that? For this sort creep into the houses of silly women laden with sin, led away by their own different, their diverse lusts. Did I not read how Ephraim is like a little silly dove? He said, when you find a nation, my people, when the chata, the sin, is beyond even reproof and correction, and the land chata, they sin against me by, by transgressing, when one act in an act of transgression, it is an unfaithfulness. Ma'a, they are unfaithful. They cannot be faithful. They're not faithful in any of their activities. 
So this land, we as a nation, we are transgressing uh, against the Torah of Yah, and we act in a way that is so treacherous, uh, so bogart. That is what transgression um, is. I informed us that Yoshua said, and you shall be betrayed, bogart. It is an act of treacherousness and faithfulness. Uh, it is a foul nature. That's what it is, Yisrael. And when they transgress grievously, uh, Yah says, then will I stretch my hand out upon it. And I will break the staff, the metet, the strength of our lives, what gives us life support, what makes us vivid and alive, what calls us to come alive, what calls us to come alive. We're a generation that folly, we, come, we become alive at that. We get animated. <clears throat> Stupid things, we get animated. But the Torah of Yah, which is the life of Yah, it doesn't cause us to come alive. He says, I'm going to break off their matef, the strength of life, what? Give them support to life. He said, and I'm going to break off the breath of lechem, the bread. What gives them strength to press on in their ways? There are. Yah says, I'm going to send a famine upon the land. Not a famine for bread. We are people that's inundated with bread. We have more than one can desire to eat. But the famine is for the hearing, uh, the, the, the comfort of assurance uh, of the Torah of Yah. He says, I'm going to set a blight in the land. And I will cut off man. And I will cut off the beasts from the land. I will cause diseases to proliferate. We see that today. The hospitals are full. People are dying every day at a faster rate than any period of time. He says, I'm going to cause both man and beast. We are beastly people. We defy you. We're adamant in our defiance unto you. He says, I want to show you the devastation of that time, what I speak. Yes, scale 14. 14, though these three men, he speaks of Noach, and Noach, his name implies the botak, uh, the trust that we rest, Shabbat. He said, though these three men, Noach, we must rest with assurance and the confidence of Torah. It says, though these three men, Noach, Daniel, and Eyob were in it. They should only Yoshach. They should only deliver, but their own nefesh by their sadiq. That's why Yoshua said you're going to be betrayed by God, by both God, by many, both by parents, family, brothers. He said they were only but deliver their own nefesh by their own sadiq, saith Almighty Yah. Yah says, I speak emphatically that if these men were in that time, they would not deliver anyone at all. That's why we must save ourselves from this untoward generation. It is a generation that has defied Yah. It has rejected Almighty your way. He said, if I cause the noisome beast to pass through the line. This bohemoth, that's what the beast is. Uh, it's the bohemoth. The governments that oppress us. The governments that vex us. The taxation of the people. The pressing of the families. Uh, look at this nation today. No jobs. The oppression and the depression uh, of the mind. Look at those that are coming out of college. Uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt and oppression. Uh, and the system uh, is a beast uh, that you're not going to get by without paying it. You can't even get a job today. 
You can't get by. You got the money, but you're not getting by. It is a noisome beast. It is the beast that ravishes your bones and take every sinew off your bone. It's a devastating beast. It crushes you. It breaks you down. Sure does. You yes, if I send the noisome beast through the line and they spoil it so that uh, it be desolate that no man pass through it because uh, of the beast. Uh, you don't pass by the laws of America. You don't pay the taxes. They will, uh, they will take you. Uh, yeah. The governments of the world are beastly. Uh, they have no conscience to reward the people of the land uh, that pay the taxes uh, and assist uh, in the support of the government. Uh, and we see it. That's why every government uh, from the time uh, of the nations of the earth, uh, whether it was the medieval Persian, uh, whether it was the Roman government, uh, whether it is this anti-Hamashiach government uh, here in America, they all associate the identity with beasts. Uh, just like the eagle for this country. Just like Magog, just like Goma, just like the bear for Russia. They are the dragon uh, for China. Everything is associated with the beast. Uh, and these noisome beasts, uh, it is the power of the government uh, to rid you of any strength at all. Uh. And Yah is trying to let us know in the midst of all that I have said this. Because he has raised up the kings. He is the one that has set them in motion because uh, we are people that defy him. Uh, and deny the power of his Hamashiach. So he said, I will send the noise and beast. And only this kind of a mindset, these kinds of men will identify the nature of what we're dealing with. This is a beast government. Every government is beast. Even our own conscience govern us with a beastly attitude. He said, though these three men were in it, as our chayel, as life and strength pours from me, as I live, says Yah, Yah says I, utter this, out of my voice, out of my theft, out of my mouth, I speak to you, Yeskel, that my people should know the impact of what I'm saying. Though these three men, says Yah, chapter verse 16, they shall deliver neither son, Bain, they shall ne deliver neither daughter, being children. They shall deliver your shock, neither son nor daughter. They should only be delivered. But the land shall be desolate. Isn't this land the nations that are desolate today? The financial obligations in the land. That even they are oppressing the babies in the womb. They are born in debt. They must tax them. In every nation. Your babies are born under the burden of the beast government. Your babies are birthed under a system and brown that They began out of the, the mother's womb to teach them and to train them. They take them out of your arms. And the beast system uh, oppress you. Uh, and whereby there is no development of love from the mother's, uh, her, her breasts. Yeah. It made you take them off your titty today. Yeah. You're shot. Yeah. They're making you, they, they drive you by master yo. You got to run daily. Yeah. That's what this government is. It's a beast Yah said, I'm going to send the noisome beast. Why? Because the heart of the king is in the hand of Yah. And as he turned the rivers of water, that's how he turns the heart of the king. He, his people are going to endure and they're going to trust him one way or the other. As old folks will say, come hell or high water, we're going to press on into the kingdom way. Hallelujah. 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 Again, I want to read that again in verse 16, though... These three men were in it. Yah says, he says this emphatically, as I live. Do you understand that statement? What he's trying to impress upon us, as I live. And we know that Yah cannot lie. 
He said, as I live, as sure as I am the most high, as sure as I am the creator, as I live, says the sovereign Yah, they shall deliver neither son, they shall not deliver daughter, but only shall they deliver, they shall uh, nasal, uh, bring themselves out of the land uh, that shall be desolate. Uh, it shall be shomama, it shall be destroyed. There shall be no life for anything. Uh, there shall not be the spirit of Yah. Do we find the spirit of the Most High among this nation today? We found the spirit of Fagadam, every kind of unclean spirit, every kind of beastly, brutal, brutal spirit. Men don't know how to treat wives, wives don't know how to honor husbands, children disrespect parents, and parents don't give a damn about children. It is the spirit of a beast. If you look at the cows out there in the field, uh, the, the mama cow will stick the horns and the baby gal, you understand? And daddy will get on uh, uh, the baby that he produced last year. That bull out there has no respect. Those rams out there have no respect. You understand? Uh, it is by nature they're beastly. And this government, the governments of the world, they don't give a damn about you or me. That's why we must, uh, we must develop this mind to endure. Even though when the afflictions and the trial become so intense, uh, we don't allow ourselves to be removed from the Torah that we began to hate uh, Israel. And then we began to speak evil against Yisraya. It has always amazed me that we can speak evil against Yisraya, and yet we don't speak evil against the wicked. We will uphold the hand of the wicked, but we will ostracize Yisraya. Something is wrong in us. Something is drastically wrong. We will criticize Yisraya, but the wicked we don't criticize. And those that blatantly defy Torah, those that, uh, ha that, that have no conscience and no delight in the Torah of Omariya, you know something is wrong with us. Yisraya, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 17, Yah says, Or if I shall bring the herep, the sword, death, if I shall cause my ruach, the sword, upon the land, and say sword, he says word, Torah, sword, go through the land, Yah says that I make harat, I make cuts, I'm going to eliminate. Yah is going to annihilate. He is going to kill your sons, your daughters. He's going to destroy them. If I say to the sword, go to, through the land and kill and cut, I want you to consume. I want you to even in their minds to cut off any thought or remembrance of my Brits, my covenant with the people. He says, I will cut off man and beast from it. Here God reminds us of the significance. He said, though these three men were in it, as I live, says uh, the sovereign Almighty Yahweh, uh, they shall not solve, they shall deliver neither son, neither daughters, but they shall only deliver themselves, Nassau. They will only break the shackles of death from themselves. They will not be able to help no one at all. No one will be delivered. The sons of the daughters. He is saying that to emphasize the nature of the time that we are in. That we as a people, although we saw, see them fall on the right hand and on the left, we still endure that. We don't deny Yah. We don't turn our heart away from Torah that we become filled with this ovon. And we began to become cold against Yah. When we are cold toward each other, you are cold toward Yah. When you're called to Yisra'ya, you're called toward Yah. Because the way you love Yisra'ya, it is an emphasis of how we love Yah. How can you say you love Yah? You despise your brother who you see in your heart, and yet you've never seen him. You don't have the love of Yah in you. You will know that you have the love of Yah in you. He that loves Yah, it will be the one that God, Shema, preserve his mitzvah, 
his commandments. Is it not? Does the commandment tell us the mitzvah to love our neighbors as we love ourselves? You will know, Yisra'ya, and love is not just a little uh, f- form of words that you speak from your mouth. It is an action. It is an action. You sense that. It is the truth, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me proceed with this. I want to close out here. Verse 19. If I sin the devir or the pestilent, if I sin death, and that is what devir represents death, when Yah said the pestilent in Misraim, the carols, they died, everything. He said, when I sin pestilent into the land, and Yah says, look how he's going to do it. He says, I'm going to shafach. I'm going to pour it out. He said, I'm going to spill it, shafach. Is that I will spill it like I spilled the blood. He caused the blood of Yahshua to be spilled upon the land, did he not? He said, I will shafach. Out my fury, my chema, my hatred, my anger shall spew from my nostrils upon it. My fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. He says, although I shall pour out a great fury upon the land. He's talking about the endurance and the patience of these men. Know you in your patience possess the life of assurance. He says, though Noach, Daniel, Yah, and Eo were in it. Yah says again, as I live, says the sovereign Yah, they shall not solve, deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall deliver their own nephesh by their own sadiq. He is trying to show us the tremendous trial that we should be tried and trying to show us that we must prepare and to make sure that we are walking according to Torah. Verse 21 For this says the sovereign Yah, how much more would I send my four sore his ra his evil judgments upon Yerushalayim he says, I'm going to send the head of the sword. I'm going to send the ra'ab, the famine. And this famine is a hunger and a desire to hear Yah. That his deliverance will be manifested upon Yisrael. He said, I'm going to send the noisome, the ra, the evil beasts. And the pestilent, the dahi, to cut off from it man and beast. That's why he's sending the judgment, to cut off both man and beast. Yet, I want your eye, and he says, Behold, therein, therein, this is the only security of Yisrael. I like this verse. Always have. Yah says, I want you to understand, even though they will not try to save son, mama, daddy, or anyone. Yah says, therein shall be left a remnant. A small remnant. A pelita. A remnant. Just a scintilla. Just a small. He said, yet therein shall be a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters that he has elected. Behold, they shall come to you And you shall see their ways and their doings. He said, I'm going to send them to the messenger, the prophet, the Nobi. And I want you to examine them. You're going to see their ways uh, and their doings. um, And you shall be comforted. I want you to hear this. He said, I want you shall be uh, no harm. You tell me that what you have done, that's going to comfort me. He said, you shall console yourself. You're going to even repent. You shall be comforted. Concerning the evil that I brought upon this people. You will know that I'm justified in what I'm doing. You will know that I'm right in what I'm doing. I'm going to bring just a small bit out. And they're going to be cleansed. 
And when they come before you, you will know that I have not done them wrong, uh, the nations uh, of the earth. Even when I scour Yerushalayim, uh, you will know that I have not done this in vain at all. He says, even concerning all that I brought upon it, you will know that I've been just. You will barach me. Even though your sons and your daughters shall be consumed in the dirt of their own wickedness and sin, you will know that I'm just. We call him unjust. And we, we speak evil against Almighty Yah. He said, but you will know that I've done justly in this matter. You will understand that, my son. He said, and they shall comfort you, the one, the remnant, because of the promise I made unto Abraham. I cannot go back. And they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. When you see what I have done, he says, and you shall know that I have not done this without cause. All that I have done in it, saith the sovereign Yah. He says, when you see them, you will know that I have not been unjust, but I've been faithful. You will know that. You will know that. You will know that I have not done this in my own anger, but it's because they have procured that upon them. And these men in this generation, they will not try to save anyone but themselves. That is why we as a nation, we cannot be silly and acting silly. We must learn what the Torah of Yah says. Because there's only one thing that strengthens us. And the patience of Yisra'iyah is found and developed only in one thing, our ability to endure. And I want to read this out of the book of Gilead, the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. I want to read this. Here out of the book of Revelation. I want to close from here and Kepha. But look, this is the blessing of Yisra'iyah. That we, how we shall overcome and our power to overcome the wicked one. Revelation 12, 11, it says that we as the people of Yah, we shall overcome him. This beastly government and this one that is anti-Hamashir. We overcome him by the blood of the dam of Yeshua and by the word of our testimony. And we love not our lives unto the death. This is how we overcome. We overcome by the dam of Yeshua. We don't love this life unto death. We know that we must have imuna because it is imuna that works patient. We must have faith to produce patience. Patience, uh, the ability to yachol, to endure, to endure the powers of hell. Uh, and we're able to withstand and able to stand uh, in the time of great trouble. But what is the assurance uh, of Yisra'ya of our patience of endurance? This is it here. In the book of Revelation 14, 12. This is our patience here. Here is the patience, the endurance. Revelation 14, 12. He is the patient. He is the yachol. He is the, the endurance, the power to prevail that we are able to stand. Here is the patience. Here is what our patience consists of. Of the Yisraelite Kiddushim of those are elected by Yah. What is it? Here are those. They are those. We are the ones that what? That Shema, that keep the mitzvah, the commandments. This is our patience. That we keep the commandments of Yah despite the opposition. You will know you have power to endure. Here is the patience of the elect. And that is what the world wants to do. That's why we will be betrayed by many. They don't want you to keep the commandments. Uh. They don't want you to honor the mitzvah of Yah. They tell you it's all right. Uh, you can't. You, 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 it's all right uh, to, to defile the Shabbat. Uh. It's all right to damn his name and not honor his name. Uh. It's all right to do that. But yet when it comes to creating an image of God, it's all right. You can't do that. But you can deny his name. You can deny the Shabbat. But yet the other six that did it with love of your neighbor, you can't do that. Here's our patient. This is what developed our patient. We must faith in his mitzvah. It is imuna, faith, confidence in Yah. It caused us to be patient. 
We know that even though the things seem as though that it's going to destroy us, we know that we trust Yah. We will be patient and wait upon Yah's deliverance. And nothing will distract us from that path. That's why we cannot develop that without hearing the Torah, the truth of Yah. Here is the patience. Here is the endurance. The endurance. He is the Yaakov. He is the power of prevailing of the Israelite Kirushim. Here are those, uh, he give us the example of the patient. Here are those that Shema, that keep the Misvah of Yah and the Imuna of Yahshua Hamashiach. It is one thing about those that endure the characteristics of a man that has this endurance, this patience, uh, Toward Almighty Yah. It is one thing that is persistent in his life. He is loyal. He is faithful. He is loyal to Yah. Despite the opposition and the trials. The tremendous agony that he that is impressed upon him. The great trials of suffering. He will not turn away from Yah. Even though that we may betray one another. You will not turn away from Yah. I betray you. You don't turn away from Yah. Why? Because we know Yisrael Yah. As I close with this verse from 1 Peter. Chapter 4 verse 18. This is truth. Chapter says. And if the Sadiqam, the righteous, scarcely. Do you understand what scarcely is? With great difficulty. It's not easy. If we scarcely be Nassau delivered, where shall the wicked and the sinners appear? If we that are the elect of Yah, if we scarcely make it, where would the wicked one, the sinners, and the wicked appear before Almighty Yah? That's why it's going to take this perseverance to endure. We must allow the Torah to shape our minds, our land. We cannot be like a silly dove without heart toward Yah. We have no heart toward Yah. We do things uh, that are insulting unto Him. We will insult Yah without conscious of that. Because we have no heart. We cannot be evil. We cannot be pata. We cannot have an open mind. We cannot be silly, Yisra'ya. So we must begin to govern ourselves from this point forward. Everything is not funny. You don't act silly. You don't congregate to act silly. We must be sober. The elders, the zakain, they must be sober. And their wives must have the same pattern that they have. She must be in subjection. She must be a daughter of Tizayon. That her beauty is expressed everywhere she goes. That men see that and they marvel in that. You can't be silly and laughing uh, and mocking and playing at things. Uh, and you can't do that, daughters. Uh, you can't do that, Ark. It's not of your heart. You do things like that. You open your heart to every kind of, of corrupt thing it is. You began to play. You're going to find yourself doing things that are so corrupt and so wicked, Yisrael. It's no time to be playing. Because when we play like that, we know we are burdened down. We are laid. We are seared and fallen. Stop it. We must cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh. The flesh beginning there. And then the ruach of Yah. From our flesh and spirit. We must impel this. And then we began to tomin, to make complete, perfect. The kadosh, the nature of Yah in our lives. That others will see that and they will marvel. That the nations will see that. Yisraya, we began. We we'll stop acting silly. Let's start there, Yisraya. Let's start there. And you know you're not acting silly when you guard, you 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 guard your heart. You govern it. You check out the very ingredients of your heart. You will know. And when you know that there is no sin, that we're cleansed. And you will know you're cleansed when the power, the testimony of Yeshua lights up your eyes. When you hear that name, you you run and leap for joy. You know you're full of sin when the name of your Shu O Maria doesn't even cause you to jump with gladness, with gladness, hallelujah. When there is no song to sing to him, when there's no excitement in your heart, you know you're full of iniquity, all right? That's it.
and you have no heart for Yah, you're cold when you hear his name, uh, you become staunch, you don't even want to hear his name. You know something is drastically wrong in us, Yisra'ya. And that's the truth. Whether you buy it or not, it is still the truth. We need that kind of truth, all right? And to those wicked Christian hypocrites, to Mr. Zachary Timms, uh, I'm not here to defend the man. I'm just saying that the duplicity of the tennis of their damned of our doctrines are so hypocritical, it is pathetic. Their mamas die on drugs in the hospital. Mr. Tim, what if it comes out that he died that way? Is your mama right? She died in the hospital on drugs. We don't want to think like that. What about your son that they had him morphine up? On so many drugs in the hospital, he didn't know whether he was walking or swimming. Did he die? He died. Does that make him right? Well, what if, what, what if he was taking legal drugs and he died? I will. What if he was taking legal drugs and he died? What if he was taking medication and he died? They're both drugs. This is a stupid jackass generation. I got something to teach on Shabbat. I want to make the world mad at me. I lock it when the world gets mad at me. I do. You understand? I'm not trying to make friends with the world, this religious core. I don't like her, and I'm glad she doesn't like me. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Ya you all Yisra'ya, let us turn shub toward Yarushalayim. In all things we do, Barakhiu, Ya, we do. Told you for all things the simplicity of your truth. Again, we ask your hand upon our precious. Chutz, Mikaya'a, Mikaya'el, and her, uh, uh, her Ish, Mikaya, and Tisafaniya, Barak them all, and all Yisraya, those that have joined us tonight, strengthen their homes, we ask. In Yeshua's name, take those down the road safely, as Achin Shimri, His Isha, and those, Achot, uh, Blood, and everyone, we ask it in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak. Shalom.